Hey guys, on this week's episode of Philadelphia Film Friends Podcast, we have John Newman. He is a documentarian as well as an aspiring TV director and camera operator on television and movies. He is from Philadelphia, an avid Beatles fan, and a good friend. So sit back and enjoy another episode of the Philadelphia Film Friends Podcast where you get to learn everything about John Newman. Did uh, you were assistant directing that, and I right. think I worked on a few sets with you where you were doing sound as well. So yeah. one of those, I, lo- I I lose track with all the films that we worked on, but like definitely through that. Yeah, I think I think it was Temple Smash, uh, my sophomore year, your freshman year, mm-hmm. and what I th- were you, you were doing camera freshman I, year. I yeah, I initially started doing Smash, um, doing camera for Smash, which was like amazing, and I really loved it. So cool, and I. It gave me an opportunity to like see a lot of the people and like interact with them, not so much like befriend them. So like people wouldn't really see me all that much because I was behind. They're like, "Oh, you work for Smash? Oh, you do camera, right?" right? right. Yeah, because I was kind of hidden. Way in love. I knew everybody. Yeah, so like I knew everybody, but they didn't necessarily know who I was at first. Right. I think that's where we met. But then, and then you were given the opportunity this year in the mm-hmm. fall to direct. Yeah, the, that the was episodes. probably the highlight of my college career because when I started Smash, I was like, this is where I want to be. And I was like, maybe one day, maybe when I'm a junior or a senior, hopefully I'll get the chance to be up there directing. And I was like, You're it'll happen. You're a sophomore. It was, I know. And you got to direct <laughs> the, the entire show. Yeah. Um, and I was just, it was something that like I was like, you know, just maybe it'll happen one day and then. Finally, I, I expressed my interest in directing once I realized that's what I want to do in TV to Julius, the director at the time. Right. Um, and I didn't expect anything to happen. And the one day he pulled me aside and said, hey, man, I really like what you do. I'm graduating. I would like you to step in as director. And here I am. But you so. were also, did you also work the board, the switchboard at one point in, in your freshman year? Or am I I did for other that? shows, but not for Smash. And was, was that with Julius? No. It was strictly okay. it was strictly for Smash. But you knew he knew that you'd done that. He he knew that I'd done that and directing is more about knowing the shots and I think that he saw something in me because we would frequently have conversations like I would pull him aside and be like, "Hey, is it okay if I do this with my camera? Or I feel like this shot will work if I do this." Well, right, so it's a, since it's a live sketch comedy show and you're going in and out of live skits and then digitals. Right. It's a lot it's a it's really different type of directing uh-huh. kind of from what people I think think of a director. Yeah, a that film. that's that's a conversation that I have with a lot of people both at my previous internship and what wherever I go because I'm either in my endeavor since like, you know, I'm both film and, you know, television. Yeah. I with when I'm with television people, I describe to them like some of the film stuff and then with the film people I'm like I describe them the TV stuff. So like the director um <clears throat> sorry, in um in film is you know the creative person so that's like right. the person who's in charge of as you know putting you know directing actors and putting the script in action yeah most of the time <laughs> yes most of the time and in television um, the director is more close to the director of photography and film where they're in charge of the visuals right. so the director <clears throat> in TV as you know is um, in charge of you know making the show visually look good um, but also th- has the live component. Exactly. Like, let's switch to this shot. You're exactly. Live editing. You're as you're, well. you're you're live editing. You're doing a lot of pre-production with your, um, at least for me, with my camera operators and with the writers to put their visions into action, and to make sure that the show overall flows well. And that's something that we're going to improve on for next semester. Yeah. And we've had several meetings about like all the great right. stuff we're going to do. It's a technically, it's a technically complicated feat. Exactly. To direct a live show. But it's exciting at the same time. It's, yeah. It's very exciting and like And as a sophomore, that's gotta be like a huge it's ego a, boost. No, a huge, no, uh, no, no, no. A huge like achievement, I think. Because and and to the point where um I remember before you, you were doing that, your freshman year, um, you were just talking about like so you're a film major mm-hmm. and then uh are you also with communications or is it strictly film and media arts? So my primary major is uh, media studies and production, which is with Klein College in right. community communication, and then my secondary is film. But it's a major. As a major, so you're double yeah. major, double major, yeah. Film has Super more. Impressive again. 
Well, yeah. Well, I I, found, I was lucky enough to find early on, and a lot of people. I kind of was doing like some research when I first started and was like talking to people like, Hey, what does this program offer? What does this program offer? And it sounds like Klein um, teaches you a lot about TV, which I want to learn about, but they don't go as in depth as film does about directing and cinematography. Oh, fascinating. So like, and then also I, I I think I've made more connections in, in film school too, but at the same time, you know, I'm in a, you know, Klein college is still very valuable to me. Oh no, for sure. So, I mean, and would you agree with the assessment that maybe documentary is your favorite type of filmmaking? I would say so. I, absolutely. Because we helped, I helped you make that uh, education documentary Yes, last year, which I'm still grateful for. Which um, was so much fun to make. That was, you know, l- looking looking back at Talk it. Talk about what it was. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so. This was the, education. The, edu- right? Yeah, the very broad name of education. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Great title. Yes. <laughs> but um, uh, it, it was about Betsy DeVoe. It was about Betsy Betsy DeVoe, Betsy DeVos, however you say her last name. I was kind of like <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of like outraged by her. Like once I saw her Senate hearing, I yeah. I was pretty outraged by that and I was like, I wanna make a video about this and then I just thought of like what if I what if I juxtaposed her Senate hearing with like some interviews of people who were actually affected by education. Hands on Act people, people who are dealing with it, affected. yeah, in various different, in various different um, perspectives. Fields. Yeah. yeah, perspectives. Good, good uh, word for <laughs> good that. Good assistant director. Good, good. Because uh... <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was AD, good but uh, you had such a good crew on that. So you had, um, you had uh, Quinn. Yeah, doing gaffing. Oh my gosh, the fact that she helped me with that. Like oh I, I look back and I cringe. I'm like, Quinn Lay. I was like, how? How? In why LA. did she help me do that? Like. Like she, she She's does best. amazing things. She's like the best human being on the planet, and she like took the time. And I could tell she was like exhausted she too. Is the best. And she was, and she took the time to like drive over and yeah, and help me unload, and then also help me film. Was Norm film there? in light? Was um, Norm, Norm was there Norm. for the um the te- um the teacher right um, at Mead School. He was he oh helped me God. shoot that. So yeah. So who were the I remember, but I'm just going to let you say it. Who were the <laughs> interviews you got for this film? Because you, you, were, you were showing footage of the Senate hearing with Bessie DeVoe. Right. And then you were, like you said, juxtaposing it with interviews mm-hmm. with talking heads yeah. of actual people in the field of education uh-huh. from Philadelphia. Right. So wh- my, my first thing was, you know, obviously a teacher. Um, and <laughs> I, I, I volunteer at Mead School on 18th and um, I believe oxford yeah and um you don't need to yeah <laughs> we don't need to tell the other location <laughs> um yeah <laughs> so yeah. um I, I, vol- I volunteer there and then i was able to meet um the teacher and i forget his last name but i was able to talk to him and say hey i'm doing this documentary got him um he said he had a lot of good things to say so i was like we'll set up an interview and then i was also looking for a college student who is affected by you know the the costs of education you know specifically college education right right and so we found you oh, yeah, you helped me find him you were actually the one who was like tim hey Tui, yeah. we i have a my friend tim Tui, and you know he um, unfortunately had some problems um, with finances and maybe we could talk to him about it and then also i wanted to talk to like a person who is an expert on education so i actually had this professor a uh, political science professor who's uh, who specifically studies education and like um, all the issues that come with that. Right, and and it was a Temple professor. The what what was astonishing for me on that? Well, first of all, this was like your first documentary, wouldn't you say? Like your first at, at, Temple? at Temple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you'd done other stuff. Yeah, I outside did some of school, stuff. but education mm-hmm. was. And this was for this was for one of your classes, right? It started out as a personal project, and then once I realized it was kind of carrying, for this, yeah. carrying over, I was like, I'll do this for my final. Well, what was so cool about that that I noticed immediately, and I am I did like a really out there documentary freshman year about trying to find a hamper, but it was so cool to learn about the documentary uh, making process and how it can be right. so different from whatever type of documentary you may work on in the future, whereas right. maybe like a feature film that's a narrative, you can kind of... There's a similar setup and pre-production, post-production order, whereas documentary, you're kind of just, you're going with the flow. You don't know exactly what the end product's going to be until right. you finish it. But uh, one thing that was just cool was with your style um, of documentary filmmaking, 
it wasn't so much like a Michael Moore documentary where he is a very clear, like, this is what he's trying to say about a certain political topic. Because this, I mean, it's education. It shouldn't be that political, but it, it was very political with, right. with getting Betsy DeVoe involved. Because, I mean, I think we both felt like she was, and a lot of people felt she was very underqualified. But in your movie, even though that's, my, that's what you were trying to say, it didn't come off, it didn't come off garish. Mm-hmm. Or, or just over the top. It felt you literally relied on the perspectives of the people you interviewed to, yeah. to to get your or to get some of what you were trying to say across. But then you also learned about what it act, what more about what the whole election for her meant. Like, what yeah. does this mean to the education system and department in the United States? Yeah, I, I wanted to make it. I knew, and I think we've talked about this. Like, I wanted to not make it so political because I didn't want it to be discredited. Um, but I personally felt going into it that, you know, the issue with Betsy DeVos serving as our um, uh, education secretary is that, you know, I feel like it's a bipartisan issue. I feel like she's just not qualified. It's not Democrat or Republican. And the, the way that she <laughs> behaved during that Senate hearing was just like I was so appalled by it that I wanted right. to do something about it. Which and is again, so cool. Yeah, and again, like what, what I – was tr- first um, saying with it was like obviously like we all look back at our personal projects and we kind of cringe a little bit. Yeah, and I look yeah, I yeah. look at it and I'm like I should have done this I should have done that. Oh, totally. But, but you but learn so much. From absolutely. That. And like in in return like you know I I've definitely been busy the past year but I have a lot of documentaries that I want to produce in the next year and I will definitely love to like right. work with you on that. Oh that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> but, and, th- and that was just another cool. It was another way that you get to meet people you worked on the set with. Like that's you probably got a lot closer with Quinn. I know we definitely formed like a, a tighter bond. After oh, absolutely! That. Like you, you mm-hmm. get you meet so many more people every time you make a film like that because you're just you rely on a lot of people for help. But uh, it was it was really interesting and a lot of fun to make. And and we just it was a great sense of passion behind it. I think like whenever right. you make something, when the people helping out all have as much passion as the director it's not it doesn't seem like a chore right which unfortunately like sometimes working on whoever's set it might feel like a chore because yeah i I don't want it to feel that way and looking back in hindsight i definitely you know it's good to know that i have like especially at temple you know talking about film you know temple is like the epitome of like collaboration i feel like with film like so many people are the fact that so many people were willing to help me with that as a freshman was like crazy um it's so nuts and it's good to know that in the future i'll have that support but um with other projects that i work on i hope to have more smaller crew like smaller crews um for them (laughs) yeah um and and not have too many people involved (laughs) yeah yeah and you got some really good i thought i thought um what was really astonishing also was like the questions you asked or you could tell you really thought them through Mm -hmm. and like you you took a lot of notes beforehand like as whatever you you know you might see when you look back on it and like critique it obviously but it you just it was really astonishing for me because I was like oh my god this guy is pretty prepared like he he's really taking this seriously but Thank um you. so I mean you did that last year <clears throat> or two years ago now and then uh, two school years <laughs> oh my god and then um you, you directed Temple Smash last fall. And then this past semester, you could have directed Temple Smash again. Yeah, but I, you didn't. I didn't. Well, well, <laughs> not, not like that. that. Not like a, that. No. <laughs> that's a whole nother story. You had well, another pick. I, I am just to preface it. I am still directing. Right. Um, but you took Smash. You took I a, took a semester off, right. which you advised. Me, well, you well, I would have done it anyway. But you helped me realize. <laughs> you helped me realize right. that I needed to do that because I love to just give of myself your, way too much work right you want to overwhelm yourself yeah well, well everyone in the film and media department does yeah that. even theater you don't you don't think about it you're just like it was so important to me and i was like i was at like in my prime like i was like oh man i can't wait i can't <laughs> wait to don't I, don't say you peaked there john no you i'm have, saying i'm on. saying that the momentum was going because i had such i had so much fun the, my fall semester and i was like in my mind i was like man i can't wait till spring and then but then you applied somewhere and then i applied somewhere that i did not think i was going to get and i got it and then reality set in and then we talked about um, your internship exactly so okay in the fall i interned in new york with dr oz the dr oz show and it was so cool now i'm not i've never really been a huge 
reality or not even reality daytime talk show TV guy. I love Ellen, but I mean I Who watch Ellen if it's daytime? on. I know because we're at school. That that it's not for us. Daytime TV is not for students. It, it is a different target audience, but they have a lot of opportunities for internships for for people in college and. Also, it's very, it's very professional productions, and I, I applied, and when I got Dr. Oz, I and just did the whole internship for a semester, learned about New York, I gained such a huge respect for it, and because you realize how much, how much work goes in, so you got a very similar internship. We both, and, we both worked for daytime talk shows that only old people watch, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, um, but you were with Harry Connick Jr. Yeah, Harry, Harry Connick Jr., that was, and... You, when we met, so like, just to like t tell your audience, like, <laughs> so what, what had happened was I, once I found, once I found out that I had got the internship, yeah. like I said, reality set in, it was something I thought wasn't going to happen. And then it happened and I was like, I need to make this work immediately. And luckily I had my good friend Ryan over here who, um, right. I had talked, we, we had had like a few meetings during his internship and like got lunch a few times and talked about his experience. And I was like, now I need to, you know, hit him up and ask him like how he did it. Like I need to right. know everything I need to need to know what I need to do. Transport. There's so much that goes into it. Logistically. Yeah. Logistically. Um, you know, in terms of like class schedules, um, extracurriculars, and then most importantly, like living situation and traveling. Totally. I was like, I have a lot to figure out and you were able to, point me in the right direction and <laughs> yeah. help me, you know, have a smooth semester. I made the mistakes. I made them, whoops, sorry about that. I made the mistakes for you. So yeah, that, right. And a lot of other people, because um, a bunch of my other friends, not talk shows, but they got internships in New York. And once you, the way I look at it is once you know the transportation. Like once that's you the hardest part. That's totally. the hardest part. Absolutely the hardest part. And that, that's, that's New York in a nutshell. It's mm -hmm. just how you get around. I'm grateful. I don't know how you how you feel about it, but I'm grateful for it. That I it was very, you know, it was rewarding. So like at, at times the transportation, you know, I didn't really think about it because I was excited to get to work. But once it started to drag out, I started to feel the the, the struggle. But like I'm grateful that now I am like I was never good at public transportation. I never was like even in knew Philly. how to even even Philly like okay like so being like. Uh, like the fact that I had to take a bus to New York and then figure out how to take the two trains back, yeah, take yeah. the subway in New York. Like oh, I, right, and right, once right. I came back to Philly, I'm like, cause I used to be confused by our subway system. I'm like, dude, this is so, easy. Is so easy. How do people not take the subway all the time? And why don't we have more trains? We need we more trains. Two, I know. <laughs> oh, right. We, we, we have two trains and I think like a trolley, yeah. which no one uses, but uh, it's so once you get it though, once you get it, it's, it's just so, something you don't need to think about. And then you, it's 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 unfortunate how quickly once you spend a lot of time in New York, you you turn into a New Yorker. Like yeah. I started to like get that, like because my I personality changed. Exactly, me too. Once I started, I, you know, I've always been just like kind of like, oh, excuse me, sorry, you know, let me, I'm sorry. Laid back a and little. And then laid back, and then. Um, but now I'm now, antsy. Now I'm just like get out of my way. I'm going to my train. <laughs> move. There's certain things I am not. I'm impatient on, and then yeah. there's a lot of other things I'm way more patient on. Right, right. It's lopsided. My whole, my personality totally changed, and I think me too. Even people realize that in the spring semester, but when you were experiencing it, but uh, I definitely feel like I, I, you're just always moving. It's exhausting, and you don't realize it. Oh my gosh, that that sums it up totally. Just <laughs> like, and you had told me this um, about your experience when you were before I had got this internship, and how, you had three days a week. Right? Well, I had three days a week. I only yeah. did so two it days was, a it week. Was, it was, so let's put it this way. I was on a mode of public transportation or a bus every every day. Every day. Every day except Saturday. Every day, man. Um, but you oh were, my you were, God. You, but you were telling me, and I didn't I didn't you know really think about it all that much, but you, before I, I had gotten the internship at Harry and we were, had lunch together, you right. were like, man, you know, once I'm done this internship, I'm going to appreciate you know, I'm going to appreciate being at Temple and not having to commute so much. I'm going to appreciate life so much more. And once, like, I, I'm surprised that my brain didn't literally explode once I finished my internship. That at how much time I had, I'm like, wait, shouldn't so I be on a, time. shouldn't I be on a bus right now? Shouldn't I be, you know, shouldn't I be on I a train or something? Like, I shouldn't be just sitting here because if I wasn't in class, if I wasn't at in New York, 
I was on a bus or a train, and it was stressful. So, okay, you said you only had Saturday off, really? Oh, only Saturday, yeah. And so wouldn't I, you just take advantage of those, those that Saturday? Like, I, I but, remember the days off I had, which were just Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. I would be, like, a lot more relaxed. I would just be focused on school because during the week, I wasn't really focused on school. But think about it, though. For me, Saturday was, like, a Sunday, so like oh. I never got that. So I every single day I always had that that pit that feeling yeah. that pit in my stomach. Like <laughs> like it's coming up. It's coming up. It's like coming up. I, I would have friends over like my apartment for the weekend and like I couldn't oh really because like I would have fun like like Saturday and then like once I woke up on Sunday I'm like yeah, I need so, I need to catch my bus. In so like at two hours. okay so at Harry at Harry there is a really cool video I saw you put up. Well first of all let's just talk about your duties because I don't think a lot of people know like what duties interns have at talk shows Mm -hmm. we can both probably share on this but yeah let's focus on harry for a second right so were what were the departments that you worked at what was the setup like day one orientation what did they describe as much as you're allowed to say if you're yeah absolutely so you know with with other shows as i was taught like fallon and a lot of the the main shows that people actually watch right um you know you get assigned a department, and that is your department. If you're mm-hmm. audience, you work with audience every day. Totally. Um, but for Harry, it was I think it was 11 of us, and we were all just general production interns, which was great because it allowed us to work with every department. Did he record five days a week or three? Um, crap. Uh, he recorded every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, three okay. days a week. So were you? You were there only on that Wednesday. Yeah, which sucked. I oh, was really? I was kind of I was kind of butthurt about that. Like, so only one day a week. You yeah, saw so the one day a week. So <clears throat> I would really take it. So it was Wednesday, and I would really take advantage of my time there. And right, just backtracking a little bit. Yeah, like sorry. The the no, I just I wanted to say how like the commute there it really um, added to like like I was saying earlier. It made me want to work harder when I was there. I'm like, yo, if I'm taking a three hour totally bus trip and i'm staying overnight and i'm taking all this time i'm gonna work my butt off like i'm not just gonna sit there yeah and like at the times where like you know you know spoiler the show got canceled so when right. I was, whenever i was like doing boring work like just sitting at the, in in the office and you not could talk anything, to people i would talk to people i would say hey what do you do um, my name's John. I come from yeah, Temple. Nothing to yada, lose. Yada, yada, I mean, nothing to lose. I'm like, you're hey, only losing time. Yeah, I would go to my exactly. I would go to my supervisor and say, "What can I do? Give me a task." And they'd be like, "We don't have anything for you." And I'd be like, "Okay," but at least they know I'm trying. Of course, because you want to make you're hungry. Yeah, you're you're hungry. You want to make your time valuable. But yeah, so that so us interns, we would work with um, so general production that included all the departments. We would either shadow in the control room. We would work in. Um, with audience and do research we would make like courtesy phone calls we would work with celebrity and do celebrity research confirming ticket phone calls exactly yeah Yeah. yeah. like courtesy reminder like hey hey my name's john i'm calling from the harry show (laughs) just a reminder your show exactly you have vip tickets for tomorrow um and then there was um the product uh i think it was called production which was green rooms Okay. Um, which is like helping out with like celebrities. And of course we couldn't talk to them, but if they needed like a coffee or something, or if they needed to walk to hair and makeup. Right. Um, so I got to meet some people through that. And then also art department, which is essentially just like going yeah, on yeah, runs yeah. like crap. We all don't, around we, New York, yeah, all around New York. Like the one time, uh, they were doing a segment, they were taping and like I had, I had worked for art department a few times and they never gave me a task, but I was sitting in the office and they called, they're like, yo, we're taping right now. And we realized we don't have a hairbrush, hairbrush, go out and get one. So I sprinted in my like business casual attire, oh, I'm, totally. like, sweating. I ran like, <laughs> like eight blocks to this near CVS and the eight blocks. Yeah. Oh, cause and, Harry's down at like yeah. 70 or whatever. Yeah. And I was and I'm not going to point any fingers, oh. but someone, there was a little miscommunication between the head of the art right, department right, right. and someone else in Maybe what they close, needed. Okay. So I got the wrong thing and I, I sprinted back and I handed it to the art director. I was like, here's what you asked for. She's like, this isn't what I asked for. Oh no. This is what I asked for. We're going, we're doing this segment in like eight minutes. And I was like this is where I get fired. I'm like panicking. I'm like, it's all my fault. So then I sprint even fat. I'm out of breath this no time. Taxi, and I, John? No taxi. Come I on, sp- man. I sprinted again and I it was able to make it back like a minute before the segment started. And I, 
And it was probably just to go like this to someone's hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was um <laughs> it was Harry's. It was probably cloth. they probably didn't no. even use it. They probably didn't yeah, even use probably, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I had I had a similar thing happen to me where uh uh what's her name? I think yeah, Nancy Grace. She was on the show. I remember she, you told me about she this. She came on a bunch and she had a just a terrible sore throat. She had something going on in her throat. And um, they, they wanted some of that chloroseptic spray, mm-hmm. which was at CVS. And luckily for us, CVS is like a block and a half away from us. Oh, lucky. So I, but she was like about to go on. And even though it's not live, they still have a rigorous taping oh, schedule. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. they're like, you need to go get chloroseptic spray for Nancy Grace. And I go, all right. And I just run out. I'm looking all over CVS for it. I'm like asking people, I need course, let me spray. Okay, okay, hurry up, it's for Nancy Grace. <laughs> and I, I go buy it, run back, and I hand it to her, and she's like, you're a lifesaver, darling. And then I walk <laughs> away, and I was like, that was, that was Is, worth that the fu- three-hour commute. Isn't that funny, though, <laughs> whenever you go on a run for someone famous, and then you just want to brag, but you, totally. oh, but you don't, like you... You know, yeah, I, you I, don't want, I don't want to brag, but you're just like, yeah. man, I wonder if people know that I'm sprinting in the sp- streets of New York to like get, you know, so this and so this is for like, Clinton Kelly. Yeah. Like I had to like <laughs> a few times, like, and like there, there was a, there was a few occasions where I was like really nervous on runs. Cause like I would, I was, I was Harry's like go-to run guy. Yeah. Like, so like his assistant like knew I would, you know, get it done and be quick. So like they would, oh, that's so awesome. the one time, um, you know, he had like a signed Jersey, like a sports Jersey that was worth some money. And they put it in some like cheap like bag, and we're like, "Go get this framed." And I was like, "Okay, framed, framed, yeah, get it like you know like uh, okay, yeah, in yeah, a glass yeah. case." But so like, just go I, get it framed. Yeah, so I like held it close to my chest, and I had. They like, told you where, right? They told me okay. where, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, I was, I looked so weird because I had this like shopping bag, and I was shielding it in my chest. I'm like, no one's snatching this from me, right? And um, I Sign. went, and I was like, yeah, and so I, and I saw it in his um on like one of the last weeks I saw it hung up in his office I was like man oh, I did nice. that and um I had to get his tap <laughs> taking it down I had to get his tap <laughs> shoes one time oh yeah like he wanted like he's like he just wanted tap shoes so like he made a custom order in like some place in Times Square and I picked that up for him and nice yeah it's so cool to go on runs uh and I bet you did a lot more of those because you had two days of the week that weren't during a shooting day oh my gosh yes yeah yes Mo- uh what was it Mondays and Fridays were you know, office days. We weren't in right. the studio. We were just in the office, so they would find stuff for us. Did to you do. ever have to drop like the the taping at a at somewhere? No, but no. I remember you were telling me yeah, about I'd that. Do that. That's, uh, that is, I would be even cool. more scared to do that than I would to drop Harry's jersey off. That's oh, having uh, a whole episode in your hands. Yeah, you have the whole episode in your hands. That is a day's work. Bring it to the editor. Yeah, because I think Oz they still do. Um, not I think it's film. They still rec- not not recording like actual film, but they, they no tape. They isn't, do actual that, tape. isn't that crazy how like you think shows like that wouldn't do right. that but then they still yeah i think just because it was pre-recorded for oz it, it made more sense and i think the studio not that it's old but that i think like the, their setup it was just more convenient mm-hmm. as opposed to and they're they're you know, i think they're transferring the file anyway so they're like let's just do tape right but, um i mean like my like current internship with the chew that that one's video and just like harry and all that but uh so uh, you had all those experiences, but and you told me this story, but I'm going to have you tell it again. But you had a day where you were in the elevator, and you had a massive surprise from a celebrity. Yes. Can I'll, you I'll never tell I'll, that story? I'll never hear the end of this. I'll never hear the end the of it. Because the video is on Facebook. Yeah, it's on Facebook. And my girlfriend and her you know, brother-in-laws and everyone, they do not let me hear the end of it. And, in a um, battle? It's a... You can brag about this. Oh, well, I can brag you look about it, but silly in it. You yeah, look- <laughs> I do. And thank you for being honest, because a lot of people are like, "You don't look that bad." I'm like, "Just tell me." I, so every time someone would comment well, on no, it, like, but it's so cool. It doesn't it, it's matter. cool. Okay, so let me just tell the story. So okay. first of all, I wasn't surprised. It was um, spoiler alert. Television is fake. Nothing is real. Um, so they um, set it up. Um, they set the segment wow. up where like they have this thing called elevator jam. So it's like one of so yeah. Harry's a musician. So they set up this thing. They're like. All right, so we're going to put a bunch of GoPros in an elevator and have Harry and his like musical guest in the elevator and people are going to walk in unexpectedly right. and um and you know they're going to serenade them uh like sing a silly song or whatever. And half of them are were real, like they're just like some people didn't know. But did you know? But I knew, but they they want to guarantee they have you knew some that was people. A segment. Yes. Oh, well they sent out an email. They're like, you know, we're doing the elevator jam. We've done it like a million. They've done it like 
a dozen or so times and they're like, all right, who hasn't been on it? The new interns. So they're like, all right, let's get the interns on it. So they had us wait in the lobby and we would take turns going in. Um, and you know, like I said, that, that would guarantee that they had some people who would probably be good and who would sign the waivers. Whereas like the other people who were surprised weren't guaranteed to sign the waiver or oh be good. God. So I was the second to go in and I, and I was knew what you were walking good. into. I was knew huh? what I was walking into. I knew who the guest was and everything. Um, but you it's know, almost you to, worse. So yeah, because just when you, when watching you, mm-hmm. Oh, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> So like, here's what happened. So in uh, in the in the video, what you see is uh, it just obviously you know through editing, like there's no issue. They're not going to show right. the whole segment. So it starts out with them singing. We got an intern in the building. We got an intern. Can whatever. you say the musical guest? It was Aloe Black. Black. Yeah, Aloe Black. The man. The man. I need the a dollar. The actual man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Harry Connick Jr. too. I mean, and he's Harry a big Connick deal. Jr. Right here. Um. So you know they were singing a song to me about intern in the building, and then they cut to me like attempting to give a high five but of course i was like shaking so like i missed the high five with aloe black didn't even acknowledge it neither did he and then i and then i went to high five harry and he stopped he's like don't high five me while i'm playing as a joke not as As a joke yeah yeah and then which was funny and then um and then it cuts to me missing my stop and then they start singing about how i missed his stop might miss my stop and then um the segment just ends so what had actually happened was um when i walked in I know Harry. Harry right, knows right. me. Harry knows me by my first name. John, wow. Yes. He knows um, my Impressive. face and everything. He knows I work for him. We get it. You're friends. Like, yes, we are, we are friends. And I had to, and then he asked me, he's like, hello, what's your name and what do you do? And I'm not going to say, it's me, John. I work for you. So I was like, and I didn't want to say. That would have rhymed, though. I didn't want to say. That would have been great for right. the song. My name right. is John and I work for you. <laughs> uh, but, um, and I felt like they wouldn't use it if. Um, I said, I'm an intern for, I, I work for you. Oh, so, so you I said, make it up. Yeah. So I said, I said, I'm an intern, um, in the building. <laughs> and then that's how they're like, <laughs> and then they didn't even start singing. I, I forget what happened before that, but they didn't start singing until right before my stop. So that's how that happened was like, they postponed it and then they started singing, you know, we got an intern in the building. So you hit like a higher floor. Right. Right. And um, what I missed my so stop great. because I didn't want to just walk out while they were singing. Like they just started. So I wasn't going to be like, I was going to be like, peace out. So I looked back, I was like, all right, I'm going to miss it. And the door closed. And then Al Black's like, did you miss your stop? And I was like, yep, I missed my stop. And, like, and then they sang the about that. And then the high five, it, they edited it. So it looked like I did it. Like, let me just give Al Black a high five. What I think what happened was he asked me for it. He was like, high five. And then I did it. So they made it look like I was just being a weirdo yeah, and trying to hide. No, I, I didn't think that was that. It was a good little, you know, ending or post for that entire. Bit. Yeah, but and uh, I'm not. I'm not upset about it. I think it's funny. You shouldn't be upset about it. You were in with the elevator with Owl Black. Right. Right. Yeah. I. That's way cooler than anything I experienced because I don't have like a video of me, you know, talking to Doctor Oz or anyone in the elevator like that. But I was in the elevator with Stephen A. Smith, which is cool, and it was right nice. for the Eagles. The Eagles were definitely going to the playoffs, and I was just like, how about those Eagles? And he's like, we'll see, all right? Nothing's <laughs> for sure. We'll see. And once you know That's it, great. They won. Well, at least you got a – I think you got a picture, like a group picture with Dr. Oz. Yeah, we did. Oh, you're see, right. I didn't we get did anything get that. like that. that. That's the one thing I regret is because, like, specifically because because he knew who I was. Like, I, Damn. I, I, I regret not, like, asking him for a picture, but I didn't want to get in trouble. Right. Like, you can – but he was super cool. Like, he was – and I want to put this on record that – a lot of talent in you know the TV industry can be super fake, but in my experience, Harry is a genuine person. Totally, he would at he would give the interns the time of day and ask us our, about our goals and like, um, you know about like you know what we did, and he would ask us how we are, and he was a super nice guy. And I didn't get a picture with him, and the oh. only proof of my interaction mm. with him is that video, right? So, um, which is I think which cooler. is something to look back on and laugh at. So. Put it in the real. But I, I think. One thing that uh, I think interning in New York made me realize is exactly what you said. Like, there's probably a lot of people who aren't down to earth, but I think if you are a host of a show, I'm actually now surprised if you're not down to earth mm-hmm. because I think you have to be a down to earth person. You would think obviously yeah. you see tons of people every day, and you probably get sick of them once. I mean, I'm sick of just talking to people because that's what you do mm-hmm. for a living once in a while. But I, I mean, I have not heard many experiences of hosts of shows that um aren't down to earth like that so i think that's really well, neat 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're saying that you you think that a lot of the, the hosts are mostly hosts down specifically. Earth. I'm not talking like guests. Yeah. Yeah. The right. 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 Yes. Yeah, well, like. there there are a few people in specifically talk shows that I've heard some dirt. Well, on. we don't need to talk about. Yeah, that. we won't talk but, about um, them. But <laughs> but, but talk, talk about the pressure. Like I I remember when I got Doctor Oz, I was super excited, mm-hmm. and I think I was way more nervous for just New York mm-hmm. than I was for being on the professional show because of stuff like. I mean, and this doesn't, I'm not comparing Temple Smash mm-hmm. to a professional talk show like Dr. Oz or Harry, but right. that type of experience and stuff I learned at Temple, mm-hmm. I think prepared me just be like, okay, yeah, I'm, at, I'm working, I'm interning here. Right. I, I deserve to be here. I it, made it, it here. It helps, man. But it, I'm it, nervous about New York. Did you, I, I, however, I did find I had some pressure or I, I got a little nervous when I had to go on a run, like you were saying, mm-hmm. or when I was given like, a, a, a task that felt very timely and very important. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. But once you complete it, you just have a whole new, like you're just so confident afterwards. Did anything yeah. like that happen for you? And you said the Jersey, but is, was there any other type, type of task? Yeah. Like run? the, the hairbrush thing was probably the worst experience I had. I didn't get in trouble. In fact, like they were happy. I brought it on time, but I was, you know, that was the first time I felt the pressure. Um, right. Which which is so it's so complicated to express that yeah Cause I feel like a lot of people who maybe and I'm not you know throwing shade at like other uh, businesses or even industries but like mm-hmm. if you're an intern at like a business you yeah. definitely you're gonna have some I, I think you can compare that to the type of internship we had cause, right cause we're in an office I, like exactly. you are in an we office we're office employees we're exactly yeah it's just like any other office so the pressure of you know, trying to fit in or right. like also just not piss anyone off mm-hmm. is there. Yeah. But it's also on like an entertainment level of yeah. like, oh, people would kill to be at this office. Like uh-huh. th- this is what people you study think about it because you, yeah, exactly. Uh, you just, you, you definitely feel the pressure and like it feels weird being an intern because like of all the stereotypes that come with that. And like once you're an intern, specifically in an office, you're just like, this right. feels weird. Like I saw this in, in like movies and stuff. And yeah. Like now I'm that bottom of the barrel position, but you realize that people are a lot nicer. Like at, at Harry, people <sighs> were very nice. Um, and also like, I never, I, tr- I never truly felt like I was unappreciated or, and I, I never really felt that intense pressure where I feel like if I, w- if I, you know, find myself at like Fallon or something in the future, I will definitely probably experience that, you know, like, Right. That's going to be a big change. One of my friends in Jenna Fallon this semester, and I mean, she she just, she was like my best friend from Dr. Oz. Right. She uh, just talked about how awesome it was, but also like day one, they sat her down and, and, and I think the other 20 or so interns and said, look, like, you know, 20,000 people applied for this. Oh we interviewed gosh. 200 and we picked you 20. Like just to put it in so perspective. So like in other in other words, like you better do good. Like at a, you had a one in like ten thousand shot of being yeah. picked here, and uh, you're really replaceable. Which is like when when someone opens like that, you're just like, okay, I can't mess up. Yeah, I I don't want to piss anyone off, and it, that the pressure is on. Like we had something similar to that at, at my orientation, but it wasn't like we're not going to give you the numbers and I'd, really I'd, just make it clear like this is. <laughs> You're so replaceable. It's not even funny. Like yeah. We can, we can At Harry, they should have sat us down and been like, listen, there were zero people who applied to this. Uh, you guys, yeah. you guys, you know, don't have to be here. You can leave at any time. Well, so I no. were you, were you there? I guess, and uh, no, well, let's, we'll try to like be careful here, but when you, when it got canceled, mm-hmm. um, did, were you in the studio or were you anywhere near the office when it happened? Or did you just hear about it? Or was everyone thinking about it? Going, It's a new show. Um, We've been on for like a year, right? Yeah. Um, and we were, me, you and I were kind of talking about this um, via text about how you, or I forget if we were talking about it in person or through text, but you were telling me how like you saw, you basically got to see the shock. Yeah. I never saw that because um, we, everyone kind of knew it was happening. Right. It was going to happen rather. Um, uh, so people, everyone pe- knew. People were surprised it got picked up for a second season. Um, hmm. Really? Which, okay. Yeah. So they all felt um, lucky to they, be there. They, that well, was the vibe. Well, not, not really. People were just like, "Oh, okay, uh, it got picked up for another season. I guess we're. I guess I have a job." People knew like once um, the deadline was coming, everyone was like, "Yeah, it's gonna get canceled." In fact, right. some people were already jumping ship. And, and was that because of the positions. ratings? 
it's unfortunate because yes, it was Abuse. a it was a ratings thing. Yeah. Um, so the the show, um, I personally, although like I didn't like some of the segments, um, I thought, you know, I got to talk to the EPs um, who also worked on Letterman. Um, which was awesome, and they were kind of telling me the intentions that they had and that Harry had, and they wanted to create a show that um, spoke that that highlighted um, important people like the underdogs and people yeah. owning nonprofits and doing amazing things, while also creating a fun environment without politics and appreciating women. Um, like Ooh. Harry was t- telling me, he he would always talk about how like he you know he loved his wife and he had a great mother and he would really love to highlight okay. the importance of women and. This okay, is, and how that relates to that is that it's unfortunate that it got canceled, and that yeah. shows like Fallon <laughs> and name any other you know late night talk show or talk show they all overshadow that because they have a listers that Harry didn't right. have, and they had when you um, have the more money writers, you have, yeah, the better guests, exactly, and um, more staff, and it was popular. Apparently, I heard it was it was a big hit in the South because Harry is from the South, and with like older women. Um, right. Well, in a way, it was almost like he was. Uh, okay, this is not a fair comparison, but it's similar to Ellen, w- yeah. with with like, oh, this is one person, mm-hmm. and they're they're famous for their own thing, right? But also, like, they they want to do the nonprofits, they right? Wanna, like highlight underdogs, That's right? Similar to like, kind of what Ellen does, but she's just been she's huge. Well, yeah, but she the thing is she. I mean, she brings in like I don't know about underdogs, but more like money. she brings it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and like she has the ability to get. She has. She's established enough totally. to get a listers where Harry wasn't, and it's very unfortunate exactly. because Harry Harry had everything that a talk show host needed. He was able to like be entertaining on his own without a co host. He was able to right. have that charm of like an you know like a. I'm not gonna say, but yeah, he's yeah, like yeah, an attractive, an attractive yeah, yeah. and charming guy who has an established career, but they didn't gain enough momentum to be able to attract right. guests that would bring in more viewers. And it was very unfortunate that happened. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, Harry's doing good for himself now. I think he's on Broadway. And, you know, it was a good publicity thing for him, for sure. I well, think he's happy to be, like, moving on. Right, right, right. And two weeks ago, I mean, I, 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 I'm i an intern at The Chew right now, and which is awesome. I, It's right. like, I, 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 I'm so lucky to have gotten that as well. Um, after Dr. Oz, like this, I'm, I just feel like incredibly fortunate. And that was an incredible experience because I mean, there's three hosts, it's cooking, it's like, it's pretty different type of show from Dr. Oz. So that I was right. just ex- excited to experience that. And, um, and it's also been on for seven seasons. Yeah. Like, and I, I, I remember watching it as, you know, with my mom a few years ago and I have strict memories of that show and I, I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I it's ne- a would never, type of show. it's a unique show and I thought it was, well, I thought it was very well established. I had no idea it would. Well, I, I don't happened. think anyone knew. That was the thing. Like I, when I found out, I mean, and this is public knowledge. Like, I'm so not, this I'm not, is like, out. Scooping yeah. anything. Okay. <laughs> but like when they, when I found out, like everyone in the office found out, and yeah. one of the producers, and I just read this online too. Like it's strictly they wanted to make Good Morning America an hour longer, and it's it's cheaper to make a show that's in a studio an hour longer. Just keep filming in that studio. You know, maybe bring in a few other people to host that extra hour. As opposed to funding another show, that, that I mean, that totally makes sense. It know, does the financial make sense. Side. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a really established show. So it was what the thing is in comparison to when like Harry was not renewed, the people and like just seeing the vibe of the office and re- the reaction, I will never forget it. That's like, a shame because it, it was just a shock for That's, everyone. And it, I'm an intern there, so I'm yeah. like. Okay, my internship's ending the same time. Yeah, but still, like just to witness it, it was such a bummer. Because I'm assuming like a lot of people who work there have been there for a while. Yeah, since the beginning, and it's a shame because you know they they gotta they all gotta find new jobs. And it's a, and it almost mistakes. blindsided, but it kind of goes into like this industry. Nothing's permanent, man. Nothing's permanent, and it's all about money, unfortunately. Yeah, everything's about, about money. like talk about like my. I'm taking a summer course right now, and we are talking about like the whole Roseanne controversy, right. controversy, and how. Just because of one person's um, mm-hmm. stupid, stupid actions, yeah. A- I'm not even gonna call it a mistake. Yeah, that's yeah. a good word. Action. You know, h- hundreds of people lost their jobs. Hundred, yeah, like two hundred or something, two hundred or three hundred or something. And think like of that. the cast too, and and the, and the, and the crew, the writers. Uh, it's 
and, my, and we know the skill. Like, there's so many people. There's so many people, and um, my t- uh, we were talking about this again in my class. How they're actually trying to um, to get them their jobs back. They're trying to renew the show, right. but with a new premise. <clears throat> like, I, I'm, I've never watched Roseanne in my life. Neither but they want to. <laughs> they want to have like the daughter who is the producer and like co-star. Um, be the new star of the yeah. show and focus it around her but statistically um it's her statistically people say like um when like similar attempts of like renewing a show with a new premise they never usually work yeah so, i mean like, the show's called roseanne yeah. it's her like it's all about her yeah and it's just so unfortunate i, I don't i'd never watched it. i don't know if there was like a standout or anything like that or if they could do you know something I, I have no idea but yeah. it, it that it's so weird to, to see well, one thing that I think that was shocking for most people uh, was just like I think for the for the past year maybe year and a half just you hear so much stuff from people and there's never any consequences and it was really interesting to see like a line a line was drawn yeah Dis- like absolutely they, within an hour the president I think what was it the Bob, president of Disney yeah, or Bob Pres- Iger yeah was it Bob they, Iger yeah they made that decision like on the spot like they had to get they the, you know the tweet was sent out the controversy started they all had to get into a room and say okay we're, any- we're gonna leave this room and we're either going to get backlash from the show still being on or we're going to lose millions of dollars and cancel the show and, and that's they- a false slot like that is one that is their big fall show yeah and now you have a th- they're like we're gonna cancel this they lost money on that. knowing they we have a 30 money. minute slot now that's open for the fall uh-huh they got three months now to figure out what they're gonna put in place of that Right, and this is their prime time slot. This is the number one show yeah. of the spring, and only had like seven episodes. Yeah. Well, they're saying, um, what a decision. Yeah, there's like a demand um, for like what a financial you know, decision. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's like a demand for shows like that where like because like who's really watching television today? It's mostly like you know older conservative people, and now they um, now you know they need to. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they came up with another similar concept. I know what's his name. Um, shows like that. Shows like yeah. that. Yeah, we are talking about um, how that. What's that one guy's name? Home Improvement. Oh, Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. He yeah. has. He has. He has like a, a talk show on right now that is like getting rebooted. Um, that's has a similar concept where it's like it appeals to the conservative audience and like now I feel like an audience be more. Yeah, there's, 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 there's be more traction with. That. Uh, who knows? But it's just it was interesting to see. Um, something like that happen uh, just because I feel like we, in a weird way, we shouldn't be surprised that it happened like that. But I, for some reason I was, I was yeah. shocked. I was like, Oh my God, television, they did that television and freelancing in general is just, it's a brutal industry. man. Totally. Brutal. Totally. But um, I mean, you know, people are in a union in case stuff like that happens. Mm-hmm. Like, and if, even if certain crew people get fired or if you have to leave or you've, if you have an injury, that's what the whole reason why you're in a union. However, like you know, cast member, same with cast members, but cast members, uh, writers, and you know, there's so many other roles where they have to figure out something else to do. Like, I mean, there's there's just people. You, you really got to have a backup plan. You really got to keep in touch with your with your contacts and right. just make sure you have some doors open mm-hmm. just in case. Like you're checking in on people. Um, I think uh, I just want to move away from that now. Let's yeah. just so you, right now you're interning with the Phillies. Uh, I'm actually wor- yeah so um or working. it's actually working yeah, it's them. like it's like um I'm lucky enough to like you know not be interning I'm actually you know working for them and doing it's a part time thing it's not a full time thing like I'm not right. work- I'm not at the Philly Stadium every day how, like, how many days a week um it depends so like with baseball there's home stands and a waste stand of so like it's <laughs> it's kind of like fifty fifty but like when they when they have a home stand like maybe two days a week okay. um, so like maybe I'll work like four days every two weeks but it's it's you know it's such it's, a good deal it, it's exactly and it's a foot in the door it's good experience it's a great organization and you're with the phillies and it, yeah and I, you know i've i've loved the phillies my entire oh my life God. um like i i went to you know my family always took me to games and the fact that i'm able to like work behind the scenes mm-hmm. in that production process is like mind-blowing and right. like it's just it's such a great experience and I I love it I love it a lot. It's so that's so cool. When you yeah. told me that I was wow jaw dropping. Um, so okay now I think we've we've gotten a good sense of what you've done, <laughs> what you've done with your life so far. Uh, maybe like one other thing I wanted to touch on. I don't even think we talked about this beforehand. But um, oh my goodness, so you're a huge Beatles guy. Absolutely gigantic, right? Yes. Andre Gardner, one or two point nine. Oh, do you gotta take that? No, I'm good. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, 
solicitor. <laughs> you sure? Oh, solicitor. Yeah. Okay. I, I thought you. It's, it's like a, you checking the. No, times. it's an unidentified number. They call oh me all the time. I hate getting the number that's like close to my number. You You're ever get calling that? about your Pico bill and right. how you. Could, you want to save money on car insurance? Like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> but I get one that's literally just one number away from my number. That, that that's what they do. They they um they purchase like they, they think it's like a psychological thing where they get they try to get a number similar to yours, so you're more likely to pick it up. But now every time, because my number is two, starts with two six seven four zero one. Now when it, that is the number that always calls me, and I'm like, it's a scam. Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah, or it's someone in your area. <laughs> Did you ever get the one where it's? I get this one a lot where it. You answer the phone and then you're like, hello? And all I hear is Marriott Hotels. Like yada yada yada. I've gotten that one. <laughs> I've gotten just, I've also get Heather from Account Services. Do right. you get her? She literally opens every no. time she says, This is Heather from Account Services. And it's totally a recording. Yeah. I, I want to tweet at Heather exactly. from Account Services and just hate on Marriott her. Marriott Hotels. But you <laughs> back to the Beatles. Uh, you're a huge Beatles guy, so is my, right. my roommate Jake. Uh, but you won something from a 102.9 show with Andre yes. Gardner, right? Oh my God, that was yes, that, that was, was that a was great recent. experience. That, recent. Was, that was what was it like a year it no, ago, year and a half, ago. year and a half. Oh, oh my well, God! For some reason, I thought it was November, dude. That was like a year and a half. Last it was before November. education, it was before yeah. we did the doc. It was before we did it, yeah. So what was it again? You won a vinyl. It was oh my gosh. So um, it was a vinyl. It was like a rare Beatles vinyl off of like. Um, so it's called the butcher cover, which is, yeah. um, basically like, I don't want to get all Beatles nerd, uh, um, here, but like they, they released, you know, the, the, in, in like America, um, do for it. every like one album, the Beatles released in England, America would make them release like three in America and just reuse songs to get more money. So the Beatles were so fed up with how many album covers they had to shoot. John Lennon was like, John. let's make a, re- <laughs> yeah, John, yeah. they they're like, he's like, let's make a really, you know, just like out there image like cover photos so they they all, yeah. they dressed up in like i don't know what you call it but like the white like doctors uniforms like were or like uh, uh, dressed up like a butcher yeah yeah and that's why it's called the butcher cover because okay. they have like a bunch of like raw meat all over them and like dismembered, dismembered. baby dolls and people were so appalled by it that they pulled it off the shelves like the first day so and then um what they did was they like they plastered a new cover over it they didn't rather than making new ones they just put them back in the shop and made a new one so like there's you can either get like the most rare one is like if you have one that was originally on the shelf but and then there's also one where it's like you you have the butcher cover but it, the other one was peeled off so they're usually not in good condition but andre gardner who hosts one or two point preserved one right he preserved he had a per, he owned it and then he had a, pro, a, a professional like glue remover take off the cover and make it look like it was like a first state um uh, butcher wow. cover and that's what <laughs> and that's what had attracted me to the event was like I, they're like alright we're gonna do some giveaways including the butcher cover and I was like oh cool it's in Newtown it's near me it's a nice oh brunch I'll take my girlfriend out yeah. and we did um, they went around with a raffle and they um, <laughs> gave out um, you know they, they first pulled yeah. the name out and they gave out like a DVD and then like a box set of something and they're like all right and the grand prize goes to and then he John called my name newman right and then i was just like oh my gosh and everyone was like clapping and i got to get a picture with andre gardner and i couldn't believe it it I was how much that worth that's worth it's probably worth a lot it, man i don't know i want to i want to go to pawn stars or something and get it <laughs> yeah, appraised because it doesn't have the actual vinyl in it it's just the cover right but what i can do is i'm thinking of buying the um other ver- like buying it sep- like the it's called yesterday and today yeah, yeah buying it and then taking that vinyl and putting it in mine um but mm. i have it i have it framed and i have it put in like a plastic case and then a frame on top of it and um it's i have so no cool. clue what it's worth but like it goes anywhere from like from like 700 to like 4000 yeah yeah, so yeah again like, if you're ever in trouble so we're going to end this we're going to end this with um a little segment called two for the road okay where it's two minutes of rapid fire questions now they're actually i should have unlimited in case you are so quick that okay. we surpass before the two minute part but uh no we only have 30 so i'm going to just ask you these you just rattle them off um you're gonna try to answer as many as you possibly can and this okay. will just get more insight into the mind of john newman hello newman all right <laughs> So never heard that one before. And again, and I also yeah, I also like to preface this with like some people think these questions are like all time. Okay. It's in stone. Okay. This is just gen, you know, this is June eleventh, setting the date, twenty eighteen. Okay. This is how you feel 
at this moment okay. in time. It totally can change in like five minutes if you want. Okay. But right now. All right. So are you ready? I'm ready. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Starting now. Do you make your bed every day? Yes. Do you take vitamins every day? Yes. Wow. T- tap water or bottle water? Tap. Hmm. Michael Jackson or Prince? Michael Jackson. Nice. Do you, do you ever have a teenage rebel phase? I had a rap phase. A rap phase? Yes. Okay. Cheetos or Doritos? Doritos. Drink uh, with any dead person, who would it be? Any dead person? Oh, shit. I was going to say. Not Paul, a Beatle? Oh, I was going to say Paul McCartney, but he's, he's still alive. Um, uh, George Washington. Wow. Not even George. Okay. Never mind. Um, uh, eat meat with any dead person, who would it be? <laughs> I, I don't eat meat. Oh, that's right. Well done. So you just wouldn't do it yeah. for to be with like. Nope. George. Okay. Um, what, what Ferris Bueller character are you? Ferris Bueller. Nice. Favorite SNL cast member? Oh my gosh. Uh, just all right. time? All time? Just go for it. Uh, no. Oh, right oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, Ky- Kyle Mooney. Kyle Mooney. Kyle Mooney. Okay. Uh, Star Trek or Star Wars? Uh, Star Wars. Mariah Carey or Madonna? Uh, Madonna. Uh, best fast food french fries? Uh, McDonald's. How often do you call your parents? Uh, every two days. Do you wash your hands after the bathroom every time? Yes. Ocean or lake? Ocean. <laughs> Did you ever have a stuffed animal growing up? Webkins. Nice. When you need to blow off some steam, what do you do? Uh, I, I listen to music and I dance. Favorite office character? Michael Scott. Favorite album of uh, this year so far? Favorite album? Oh, yay. Out of date. It's a 20. Okay, yeah, nice. Uh, favorite movie of the year so far? Uh, favorite movie of the year? Um, uh, it was Re- last year, but Florida Project. Nice. Moonlight or La La Land? Moonlight. Rocky or Rambo? Rocky. New York or LA? New York. Uh, Fuckman State? <laughs> anyway, uh, was Hillary Duff a Duff in high school? Yes. Okay, uh, if you had a TV show, what would you call it? Newman. Nice. <laughs> Favorite convenience store? Convenience store? Uh, convenience store. Walgreens. 25 seconds. Serena Williams or Robin Williams? Robin. Delivery or DiGiorno? DiGiorno. Sexier accent, Aussie or British? Aussie. NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Do you go out of your way to recycle? Yes. Indiana Jones or Han Solo? Han Solo. Ever sneezed on someone by accident? All the time. Wow. Greatest US... not too. Nice. Chocolate or vanilla? Uh, chocolate. Last question. Uh, when in the car, radio or own music? Dude, own music. Who listens to the radio? Wow. Okay. John Newman, everybody. I, you know, recently, I like to do all, my own music, but for some reason, there is something about listening to the radio, and when a song comes on that you know... I'm, oh yeah, oh no. God. I was I was only kidding. I listen to the radio sometimes, but I would say ninety nine point nine percent. Oh of yeah, the time no. You, I listen I to my do that own too. music. I do that too. I do CDs still too. Oh yeah, yeah CDs. Nice. I have the uh, my car. I have a tape deck. Right. Get out. Oh, the, the little aux. wire. Yeah. yeah. But there's a cool tape deck out now where it, like it broadcasts a signal, so you can just go to a channel on your radio. And then it's Bluetooth with your phone. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really neat. But anyway, John, thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can I was gonna say where can people find you? They can probably find you at the Philly Stadium. They can find me at the Philly Stadium. Uh, Do you want to plug anything? At the at the yard, uh, like a Vimeo or YouTube. Um, or I'm currently life. in the process of building my production company, John Newman Productions. So, wow. uh, Facebook.com/slash John Newman Productions. Give it a like. Um, that's what I'm up to. Phenomenal. Uh, yeah, and I also want to say thank you. I think uh, what you're doing with this podcast is really awesome. Oh, kind of given, you know, highlighting some people at, at Temple, and I think it's a good way to kind of grind and and do your own thing. Yeah, it's and a be, fun. And be productive, and and I, I think you're you have the voice for radio, and oh I think God. you're you're. You're doing the right thing, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. It. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, if I learn anything at Oz, they were saying just always do your own thing. So Absolutely. Hopefully we'll have you on in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.